Hello, hi everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay and um, see us okay. I hope this is all coming out all right. Um, I've already said hello to some of you in the comments. Um, oh, and of course, now I've started that, this one started slowing down. Um, if someone could just let me know if you can hear me okay in the comments, that would be really good, thank you. Um, hello to Shana in Portugal. Thank you very much for moderating for us tonight. Hopefully Shana will be joined by Lee, Lee Davey. Yep, oh yeah, okay. Thank you, Andrew and Vista for letting me know that you can hear me all right. Um, just, well, give it a few minutes just for people to, um, to, to crack on and tune in. Sorry, to people to um, join us. Here's Dougal, say hello Dougal. Oh, as just enthusiastic as ever. Um, so just a quick recap, recap what we've been up to. So we came back from the Outer Hebrides. Uh, we did that lovely day on the East Lancashire Railway, stayed at Burst Country Park, then went down to the NEC. And then as a lot of you know, I went over to Portugal to dock sit for Shana. And that was uh, really nice. So came back on Wednesday, Thursday, went to Battersea Dogs Home with my mum because we're looking for a new dog for her because I'm in serious danger of losing Dougal if I don't find my mum a new dog and now I am back in the Airstream and I'm going to talk about my dream outfit my dream rig so I'll get straight on with it a lot of people have asked me what is your dream outfit what's your dream rig and the thing is also I get a lot of questions people say to me what should I buy what's the best thing? Should I buy a motorhome? Should I buy a caravan? Should I buy a camper van? And the thing is, if there was one answer, there would only be one solution out there. But because there are hundreds of solutions out there, that means that there are hundreds of scenarios and circumstances that everyone's different. That's why there are so many leisure vehicles on the market today. Um, and the problem for someone like me is that I don't just do one kind of touring. So when I was in Italy with James and we had the Etrusco motorhome, that motorhome, that coach built motorhome was just perfect for that trip. Um, when I went up to the Outer Hebrides in the Sun Living camper van, that was great. It's probably a bit small for that trip. Um, but, you know, the versatility was great. Um, so Sometimes when I do touring with the Airstream, that is fine if I'm staying on for a few days, but when I'm, I, sometimes I'm moving on 30 times in three months and that gets really tiring, keep hitching up and moving on. So there seems to be no perfect solution. And the, my personal requirements, I mean, from, is that if I had a motorhome, say for example, I wouldn't have a car, so I wouldn't be able to go, you know, shopping and things like that and go to the railway station. I wouldn't want to leave a motorhome at the railway station while I get the train into London or something like that. So I've got the motorbike, I hear you cry, but the thing is the motorbike is really for nice weather. And in the Hebrides in the winter, or most of North, most of the places I like bike, and that is a requirement of my dream rig. But um, I also want a small vehicle for pottering around in in rotten weather. So my rig at the moment, my Nissan Navara with my Airstream, basically covers almost all of my needs because you know that's what it is. The I put the bike in there, the Navara, and the Airstream on the back. Um, so one of the things I thought about was, well, I love my Airstream, and the Airstream is perfect for um, staying on site. For longer periods but what about if I was touring you know really sort of just going away for five days and taking the motorbike and not wanting to lug an airstream around with me so I think well what about you know um, a camper van and a camper van to tow the airstream with but the problem there is then how do you take the motorbike because if you have something like, you know I love the Adria Twin, the 640 SGX with the raising bed, that you can put the bike in the back, but the trouble is then you've got this high roofed panel van conversion. And that is gonna stop you going to a lot of places, that high roof. 
so I would probably want an extending roof and if you go for an extending roof camper a pop top like a, Vol a VW California then you have this rock and roll seat in the back so you can't get the bike in so what do you do well for about two years I have been lusting after a van conversion to tow an Airstream now I still love the Airstream I'm still I will update you folks in a couple of weeks about my own Airstream because we are still very much up in the air with that. Um, I've been let down by a couple of um, servicing people or whatever. I'm happy to say that Airstream in the United States are stepping in and helping to locate someone who's going to take on my little mini refurb. It's not a huge job, it's just I've been let down by a couple of companies that um you know it's you know you, you have a 12 week 12 weeks you wait for sort of to organize everything and let them get a thing in the workshop and generally i've had two companies now basically get the can opener out the drawer to do the work and then they go actually no i don't think we want to do this so fortunately the lovely people at airstream now in ohio have said okay enough's enough um we're going to step in and help so um, hopefully get mine done or give you an update on mine pretty soon so thank you to Airstream UK for the continued loan of this Missouri would it be a Missouri my dream Airstream um, I really like this I'm finding this lounge a bit small though and the table so now I'm thinking maybe I prefer a Yukon so would it be a Missouri or a Yukon it would be an Airstream but what about to tow it with and that's what this live stream is all about so um, I'm afraid I'm not going to go through the comments because I'm sure a lot of you would just want me to crack on and get on with it. As I've hinted, if I had a camper van that I could get the motorbike in, but it had an extending roof so I could use it as a car, wouldn't that be great? Because that would really tick all the boxes. And then at the moment, if I want to leave the Airstream on site and go touring just for a couple of days, I have to take the motorbike and the tent which is fine if it's nice weather but if it's meh weather then a camper van would be superb so i've had my eye on this vehicle for a couple of years and finally i talked nicely to the company at the nec in february and said please can i borrow this because i love it and i want one and they went as long as you make a video we'll let you have it for a weekend so i've got this van for a weekend I'm not going to keep you in suspense any longer. I'm going to take you out and show you what it is. It is an Auto Camper MRV. Um, now, if you don't know what an Auto Camper MRV is, I'll very quickly introduce it. It is a Ford Transit based conversion uh, by Auto Campers. They've got three branches. Their main branch is in Reading in Berkshire. They've got one up near Sheffield and they've got one in Inverness. So they're pretty well through the country really nice bunch of people and I'll take you out now and um, just to check I've got everything um, so that yeah I think I think we've got everything but just before we go to the van sorry I've got a couple of thank yous um, forgot the thank yous really sorry so thank you to Shana and to Lee for moderating I want to say a huge thank you to Alfie thank you Alfie most of you know Alfie from the channel Lost Weekends um, Phil and Juliet. Alfie is the star of Lost Weekends, just like Dougal's the star of this um, channel. Um, so thank you for my lovely picture, Alfie, and thank you for the flapjacks that were delivered with it, Phil and Juliet. Also, a huge thank you to Joanne, Martin, and little Ellis. They gave me a nice little card and also a brilliant mug, but unfortunately I've had to take that back to my mum's because I haven't got room for a mug in the airstream but it was really good but thank you for that joanne and martin and ellis and for my little card and as i say thank you to shana little picture of me and shana um for moderating so yeah huge thank you for that so let me show you um this mrv and then i will nip back and we'll look at some questions so let me see if i can cock this up so how do I switch this around? Because you don't want to look at me. Here we go. Right, Dougal, could you please look a bit more interested? Right, let's go and have a look at this van. Da, 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 da. 
there it is folks because I know you can get other vans that have got sort of track systems in them um, but some of them they just don't really do it for me um, this one really does it really does you can get it on it's mostly a Ford Transit you can get it on a VW T6 chassis if you so wish but this just does it for me now then Ta-da! I suppose I could have taken my rubbish out before, couldn't I? Oh, so daisy. There we go. So, what I love about this van is you can see this M1 track floor track system. You've got four rails in the floor. Sorry, I'm just going to try and get this. Oh, silly me, I forgot to get this box out. Oh. Right. So you've got this floor rail system and that's how we've got the bike in. Now, the great thing about this rail system is you can have two single travel seats instead, which are basically similar to that. Um, so you can have two seats. Obviously you can have wheelchair restraints. So if I want to take my brother out anywhere, I could take my brother because he, he can't transfer um, or he can transfer out of his wheelchair, but it's he wouldn't be able to get into one of these seats. So. If I actually wanted to take my brother somewhere, I could. Not that I'd want to. Um, you can also have a bench seat, and um, that's not a travel seat though. That would be folded back, so you can have a double seat here. I just wanted to leave the bike in and show you it with the bike in. And then this is really good. This bike grab at the front, which is attached to the floor, and all this is crash, crash rated. So you can see that in the event of a crash, whoop, and me falling backwards, um, it's going to hold the bike. And then you can also see, you can actually turn the seats even with the bike grab in place. So I am obviously going to be doing a review of this on my channel, folks. Um, I just wanted to sort of quickly show it to you now because I'm so excited about it. Um, the cab has just got literally every tour you could imagine it's got a 170 ps engine 170 so it's going to tow the airstream with no problem you've got a roof bed in the extending roof so um you can obviously don't if you do travel with the bike and you don't put the seat in you've obviously got these seats at the front i'm sitting in now and you can sleep in the roof bed when you put the roof up um, so yes, this is it. This is what I figured was going to be my dream camper van. And as I said, there will be, whoops, we'll go back into the Airstream. Um, I'll just finish showing you around here first and talk a little bit more about it. Oh, I'm sure a lot of you will want to know how much this costs. They start at about mid forties. Um, this one in particular, with all the toys, is £55,000 in this, so, uh, you know, and you don't have to have this colour wood, you can have different colour woods. So that's it from the back. And obviously, if you had this um, van, you would not have a huge ramp like this. This is my, my ramp from the Navara. You would have something a bit smaller and a little bit more discreet. Uh. And then finally, what we've done here is there's a nice little gap here. So this is where Dougal travels and that is not moving anywhere. That's the fridge there, 50 litre compressor fridge. Um, and then you've got this flap here, makes for the kitchen and a canopy over the top. So this is, just beautiful. It's got Apple CarPlay. Um, oh, it's just awesome. So I'll give you another quick look and then we'll go back inside the Airstream and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So really that is my dream rig, which is an Auto Campers MRV towing an Airstream 
Missouri or Yukon, I'm not too sure. I just want to put this box back in, so bear with, bear with callers. Because that's just things like my helmet and stuff in there. Right, let's go back in the airstream. I'll look through some of your comments and then we'll do a little wrap up from there. Right, Dougal. Did you miss us? Yeah, like heck. Now then, let me see if I can whoop, twist you all round and try and get you back where we were. Bear with, sorry everybody. Oh, here we go. Right. Okay, so there you go. That was the MRV. Let me have a quick look at some of your comments and then I'll run through just a few little more technicalities that I've missed about the MRV. Oh my goodness me. You have been busy, but I see that Shana has been entertaining you all, so thank you very much, Shana. Hello, everybody. I don't think we're going to name names today because there's just so many, but it's so nice to see all the regulars here, like the Coxes and Sandra for the love of caravans, Caravan and Motor Gossip and Cat and Craig, Jamie Pickles. Hello, Hitch, and to Hitch Up and Toe. Hello, Here We Toe. Hello, Stephen and Carla. Um, and who else have we got? Lost Weekend. So, hello, Phil and Juliet. Uh, you probably saw the bit about. Um, Alfie's picture. Uh, come on, England v Scotland, it just keeps off. I'm really sorry, I didn't know, I don't follow all that kind of thing. Um, hello, Mark. Um, I said hello, Kat and Janet. Dave Thompson. Uh, Tin Tent, nice of you to join us. Thank you, and thank you for moderating. And Nicholas Rutter, hello. Um, and Sid, Trevor, hello, Trevor. Hello from Brooklyn, New York. That's Diane, hello. And trust number four. Shruti, hello from Devon, hello to you, hello Vince and Jeff, Shropshire lad, nice to see you here, oh my goodness, will I be doing super chat? No Diana, I don't do super chats because Google takes 30% of super chats, if anyone wants to support the channel, if you go to andrewditton.com, that's my website, there is a little Dougal treat button on, the, on there, that if you want to buy Dougal some treats, please feel free, where is Dougal? Dougal's here, um, Right, oh hello from Cyprus, Biker Space. So I wonder how, what you thought of the MRV Biker Space. Um, and Leslie, Leslie Barlow, hello. Um, rolling with the Robinsons. Um, Bob, hello, Bob. Bob and Janet, nice to see you here. Oh my goodness, Tammy Caravan Nuts loves the bike. <laughs> yes, so do I. Um, right, okay, so I'm gonna whiz through these and then carry on. I think some of you are talking amongst yourselves in there. Hello, Christine Duffy. Nice to talk. Oh, Mauricio. Hello from Brazil. Oh, wow. Hello, Brazil. Um, gosh, uh, that's brilliant. And right. OK, so a little few more bits about the um, MRV. As I said, it will be a full review on this channel. Well, not as full as some of them because I've only got it for a couple of days. Um, as I said, that's a Ford, tra Ford Transit 170 PS. It's a Transit Custom Limited, so it's top of the range with absolutely everything, every bell and whistle that you could possibly wish for. You can get it in a VW T6 150 PS, but that will cost you an extra seven to eight grand. The VW is obviously going to be a bit narrower, so a bit easier to drive, but then you can have less internal space. And trust me, loading the bike in, unloading the bike, I think if you're going to put a bike in, um, I would go for the tranny, personally. But you know, 100 watt solar panel is included, which is good. Um, yeah. So, um, is it my dream rig after all? Well, I still love it. I still think it's lovely. I obviously, haven't really tried it in anger yet. There's a couple of things though that I didn't really think about that now have become quite clear. Number one, if you are traveling with a motorcycle in your vehicle, you have to remove the motorcycle before you can sleep in it or even make a cup of tea. Because if you were to spark up that hob, boom, because you've got all the petrol vapor in there. So that's one thing to be really mindful of. So if you are going to use it as a touring vehicle with a motorcycle in it, um, you are going to have to take the motorbike out before you can use any of the sort of habitation stuff. 
So if you were driving up to Scotland and you just wanted to pull over for the night, well, you could, in theory, put the bed down, you know, put the roof up, put the bed down. You would want that bike out of there because of the petrol vapour. You certainly wouldn't be worth making a cup of tea uh, or anything on the hob because obviously you've got this huge risk of explosion. So that was one thing I hadn't considered. The other thing I hadn't considered is that a camper van by its very nature doesn't have a huge amount of storage and obviously if you are on the road like me for months at a time um, you do carry things around with you like a bucket and sponge, your, your box of car valeting stuff, um, the, the, the long um, pole with the brush on it you know to clean the rig um, and if you've got a motorcycle you've got all your bits and pieces your leathers your helmet your boots and all this sort of thing so the Missouri has a great and the Yukon have a great underbed storage areas you can put your bit stuff under the bed but um, is that going to be enough space for a long trip for someone like me who's basically spending most of his time in his van I'm not so sure so I still love it I would still say is it my dream rig I think so but having now had the privilege of trying it out um, it's brought up a few just I wouldn't say shortcomings, but things that I hadn't really thought about because in the excitement of, um, oh, I really want this, this is really good. Um, I hadn't really considered both the the actual bike being in there and the petrol vapor and then the uh, the storage it could, because once you fill up the storage in the van, because you haven't got the seat in there, you know, you can get a double seat in there and that would give you more storage. But if you would take the seat out as I have, um, or as Auto Camper has, and um, you don't have the seat in there, you lose all that storage behind the seat. So it's just something to be aware of if you're going to use um, your van as a motorcycle transporter. You, there are other vans on the market that use the uh, the track system and uh, with the, right, re, the right, Remo Remo roofs, but um, I just think the Auto Camper MRV just looks the business it really does so like i say folks in about two or three weeks there will be a vlog on my channel um a review of that that vehicle um next week hopefully will be part three the concluding part of the how i vlog series about the production process um, and stuff like that so i will come back to your comments and then we will wrap it up so um let me have a look <laughs> Lindsay, big boy's toy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, wheels get off. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, too. You're looking at, as I say, that is 55 grand in that, guys. Uh, uh, one of these airstreams would cost you 75, so you're looking at 130, um, which is the same as an A class, or, you know, some A classes. Yeah, you can get an A class for 60 grand, but. Um, something like a, a knees I can never say knees Dorfen Bisch, Bischoff or you know a Concorde or something like that is going to cost you 130 grand or or the um, Buccaneer with a Range Rover so it's really horses for courses um, oh this is nice BMW rider training in the West Midlands if you're venturing through Stoke on Trent pop into the school take on a nice motorcycle ride oh thank you very much that would be lovely um, Hello, Ed. Oh, hello, hello, Annette. Nice to see you here. And Dave Wilkinson and Elizabeth Long, Devious ST. Hello, and Bertrand, oh Bertrand van Limbergen. Oh, Amanda Regan. Hello, Amanda and Ali. Thank you for joining in. Um, so, just I don't want to hope. hope sorry if I miss anyone. It, there's a lot of people here. Hello from Budapest, from Bu Buzos eighty three. Well, hello Hungary. Thank you for joining us. Um, Vince, 170 PS, he accidentally bought a 225 BHP Vito to tow, tow his Swift Challenger. It doesn't struggle. I can imagine it doesn't because, oh my goodness me, um, that um, 170 in the van. I can tow, it has got a tow bar, but I'm not sure I'm going to have the time to tow the Airstream. I've towed with commercial vehicles before, they tow like 
you know, because of the long wheelbase on a van, it, the stability is never going to be an issue. And with the 170, the, the power is not going to be an issue. So um, I don't see that as a huge um, priority right now. Um, oh, what have we got? Shrimp farmer. Yes, yes, it does look amazing. Um, hello, Jacob and Pietro. Oh, I've just jumped. So I hate it when it does this. Uh, three dogs and a camper. Yeah. Oh, you call those class B RVs, which is called panel van conversions. Hello, David Bell. Sorry, fashionably late. What did you miss? Um, you can always um, go back and see. But basically, David, it's uh, a Ford Transit camper van, an auto camper MRV with a 170 BHP engine that takes the motorbike and tows the Airstream. Michael Fuchs, petrol vapour equals migraines. Exactly. That's why you would have to remove the bike if you're going to sleep in it um, because of the petrol vapour. Obviously when you're driving it's not an issue because you've got the, the, the ventilation at the front of the vehicle that's obviously blowing the air that way but yeah you would not um, you would not live in it and, um, until you took the bike out. Um, do you really need the motorcycle? Three dogs and a camper. Do you really need the motorcycle? I'll answer that by nobody in the UK needs a motorcycle. <laughs> okay, um, because a motorcycle is never about need, it's always about I love it, I want it, it's beautiful. If they did them and money was no option, Airstream motorhomes are stunning, they don't seem to be available here, they're not CAS, um, they stopped making the A-Class many years ago. Um, they do do um, what we would call semi-integrated and van conversions in the States. Um, I'm not aware of any plans to bring those to Europe, but um, who knows? I think the European Airstream market has been very, very, very quiet recently because um, production was taken back to the U United States for all Airstreams back in 2013. Then obviously they've set up the arrangement with Swift in the UK, so I think they've been very busy really just getting dealers and distribution in place. So I'm kind of hoping, I don't know, I'm not privy to any inside information, but I'm really hoping that that means that now Airstream will probably be able to focus a little bit more on developing European ranges. Um, as I say, I'm not privy to any information. I just think they've had a you know, busy few years um, taking the European production in-house into Jackson Centre, Ohio and um, also then setting up the UK distribution network through Swift and uh, um, Airstream dealers. So as I say, never say never, um, maybe one day we'll see Airstream motorhomes in the UK. Goodness knows what um, they would end up costing, but who knows. Um, yes, Gootsy Sue, um, wondering where two lids, waterproof leathers, boots would go. Yeah. That's exactly it. I mentioned earlier about storage. Um, oh dear, we're getting some um, requests for Dougal. Sorry, mm, Dougal, um, your your public are await await. Yeah, um, this is about as good as you're going to get, folks. This is about as good as you're going to get from Dougal. Right, we have been half an hour. I think that's about time to uh, let people get back to Scotland v England. Um, and um, oh, thank you, Cat, re reminding people to um, hit the. Uh, hit the like button. Um, oh yes, I think you've seen in the comments, you've been reading the comments, Shana managed to sell her little van Millie when she went to the States, so congratulations to Shana, which is um, obviously very bittersweet for her, I'm probably sure she's probably said in the comments, you know, because it's kind of, you know, end of an era, and it's also one fewer tie to the United States and one more commitment to Portugal, isn't it? So, yes, um, anyway, so a huge thank you everyone for joining us and supporting us, uh, for joining in. I hope you found it interesting. Um, it is lovely, that van, it's so lovely. And um, like I say, next week's vlog will hopefully be the part three of how I vlog. Um, week after that will be a day out with the van. And then the one after that, so about three weeks, we should have a review of the Autocamper MRV. I've only got it for a few days. It won't be 
massively in depth like some of the say the Corrado Vlo or the Sun Living V60 but you know I'll be driving it I'll be sleeping in it I'll be making a cup of tea in it maybe even making pasta in it but the bike's got to come out first so um, that's that all right then oh <laughs> Trevor instead of a like button shouldn't there be a lick button for Dougal well yeah that's a very good idea very good point there yeah Venomator, thank you for joining us for the love of cameras. All right, everyone, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, it just leaves me to say from Dougal and from me, Dougal, please, Dougal. No, we've, we've really had it with him. All right, thanks, thanks so much for everyone for joining us. And of course, oh, there's a dog outside now. Thanks for churning in. Right. Oh, crikey, now I'm just wrecking the joint.